Wow, I'm seeing some really incredibly beautiful things and nobody else has seen them. Anthony Bourdain was widely regarded as one of the most influential American chefs around the globe. Along with his successful career as a restaurateur, Bourdain found fame as a television personality traveling to international and at times dangerous cities to sample their unique dishes and culture. Throughout his journeys, Bourdain proved that he had a stomach of steel, never backing down from a taste test challenge. With that in mind, let's take a look at the top 10 times when Anthony Bourdain ate exotic food. Anthony Bourdain and Super Soup this is delicious. Anyone would just completely love this. If you eat too much of this, you'll go blind. Now becoming well-known as an affordable and exciting tourist destination, Thailand was featured in Bourdain's show Parts Unknown, when Bourdain traveled to a small Thai town to rub shoulders with the locals and test some interesting food staples. At a popular village restaurant where all animal products are featured heavily on the menu, Bourdain settled down with a friend to get some grub. Not one to shy away from anything, Bourdain quickly amped things up by ordering the pig blood soup, consisting of raw pig's blood combined with lemongrass, mincemeat, and pieces of animal's innards. Upon seeing the soup for the first time, Bourdain couldn't disguise his shock, stating, You're not kidding, that's like a horribly, like, CSI soup. However, after trying his first bite, he warmed up to the creation, calling it completely delicious. Actually, that's completely delicious. It's utterly delicious. Apparently, Bourdain and his friends were impressed by the flavor profile of the soup, explaining to viewers that it didn't actually taste like blood, but was in fact sweet, with a bit of spice to it. To follow up the soup, the men were then brought the second part of pig product that they would be tasting with the soup, this time pig brains. While it may seem like a disastrous meal to viewers back home, Bourdain thoroughly enjoyed the brains as well, digging in and dubbing it the best meal he'd ever had in Thailand. Before we move on to the next meal, take a second to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Bourdain and the meat slushy. Uh, nice. Uh, Singapore has a lot of popular namesakes in the Western culinary world, from Singapore noodles sold at every Asian restaurant to Singapore slings made in every bar. What's not so common in North America is the concept of a meat slushy. Bourdain found this out for himself when he traveled to Singapore for his series, No Reservations. One of his first stops was at a food court, but instead of hosting generic fast food restaurants, it had a vast array of exotic meals and snacks. Naturally, Bourdain couldn't be contented with his first first, more normal choice of chicken and rice. When out and about the next day, he revisited a food court and went a little wilder, opting for the soup too long, otherwise known as bone soup or a meat slushy. Brilliant red and chunky, or as Bourdain himself described it, it's an eerie, unearthly, doesn't really occur in nature bright red. While this may not sound particularly appetizing to the average person, Bourdain excitedly added that it has all of his favorite things. Well, to each their own. This wasn't a typical soup that Bourdain could spoon up, but instead he had to grab each bone individually to suck out chili-infused marrow. In the end, he even had to stick a straw into the bones to properly suck out all the blood. Like this, huh? Maybe not the best food for a first date. Anthony Bourdain versus Living Food it may seem like Bourdain spent all his time exploring foreign countries, but he took a break from jet setting to pay a visit to Queens to try some unexpectedly exotic and dangerous food. Bourdain stopped in at Sikh Gak, a barbecue and seafood restaurant that seemed ordinary but was in fact the opposite. Not only did the restaurant specialize in seafood, but it also specialized in serving seafood that was still alive. A plate of live octopus was delivered to Bourdain and a friend, with tentacles still flailing around and shifting all across the platter. Of course, being the brave taste tester that he was, Bourdain fearlessly grasped the wriggling tendrils of octopus with his chopsticks and swallowed it down without any hesitation. He enjoyed both the food and the overall experience, calling it delightful. Aw, it's cute. However, mid-chew, Bourdain ran into a problem when a tentacle grabbed onto the inside of one of his cheeks, not ready to be eaten just yet. It turns out that eating live octopus can be a risky business, because the suckers can latch onto your throat and cause you to suffocate mid-meal. Luckily, Bourdain taught the tentacle who was boss and finished devouring it, but some diners have actually died from this squirmy dish in the past. Once you overcome your quaint provincial preconceptions about whether your food should move or not, it's delicious. Bourdain and the breakfast porridge 
A bowl of oatmeal isn't an unusual thing to sit down to in the mornings, but watch what's in your porridge if you ever find yourself in Brazil. Bourdain loved food markets and decided to tour around one during his visit to Brazil. He quickly made a new friend when a local boy tagged along, sharing his soda and meal with the boy and his friends. Bourdain started off easy with some grilled meats and rice before delving into the stranger foods. At the next stall he visited, Bourdain tried beef broth porridge, a thick yellow paste. It consisted of beef scraps and broth and then thickened into a porridge with flour. On top of the porridge, Bourdain sprinkled some salsa, definitely defying porridge norms. It was just like meat, 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 meat and meat and more meat. Uh -huh. and he used the strange porridge as a palate cleanser for the second act of the meal, a plate of random meat chunks. Bourdain couldn't even distinguish what exactly the meats were from, but that didn't stop him from digging in with enthusiasm. Vegetarians change the channel. I mean, really. While some people may cringe at the thought of eating unidentifiable meats, Bourdain simply said, I pity the fool who doesn't like this. Bourdain got especially excited when he caught a hint of organ meat in his dish, describing it as wonderful and complimenting the owner of the stall for a great meal. Bourdain and the Snake Heart Oh, it's rubbery. I'll tell you, it's rubbery as hell. It's a yeah. During Bourdain's journey to Vietnam for his show A Cook's Tour in 2013, he ate some pretty questionable things, from squid soup to pickled snake broth. However, the most extreme food challenge he faced was at a local restaurant well known for its dish consisting of a beating cobra's heart. Bourdain explained that certain foods supposedly hold significant powers in Vietnam, and that consuming a cobra heart will increase one's stamina and overall health. It's usually a bad sign when even the waiters are afraid of the food that is being served, but that didn't stop Bourdain as a live cobra was brought out into the restaurant to be prepared as his next meal. After watching the snake hiss and lunge on the floor, Bourdain sat back from the main attraction as the snake was prepared right beside his table. He didn't know. You'd have no problem with that. But if you did know? The heart was then dished out to Bourdain, and he swallowed it down, still beating. Reflecting on the dining experience, Bourdain said that he could feel his meal pulsating as it traveled down, and proudly exclaimed that he did feel stronger. Some people may prefer to just hit the gym for a strengthening session, but Bourdain clearly didn't have time for that. Bourdain and Bowls of Bile Bourdain seemed to have a knack for finding unusual soups throughout his expeditions, and he managed to do it again when he stopped at a restaurant in Pampanga. Bourdain was dining with a fellow restaurateur who convinced him to order a bowl of bile soup with organs chopped up in it. Bile is extremely bitter and not something that most people want to taste more of. But when in Pampanga, one needs to get the full experience, even if it's not the sweetest. On the plus side, bile is supposed to have amazing healing properties. So maybe consider switching out your chicken noodle soup for some bile the next time you get sick. Bourdain was not amused, and in a rare moment admitted that a food was too gross even for him. Hell no. <laughs> no, that ain't gonna happen. No amount of alcohol you'll in the eat, world. You'll he had tried it before and summed up his thoughts by saying, my bile experiences so far have not been so wonderful. That's one way to say it. His restaurateur friend tried to sway him to team bile, saying it was just an acquired taste. And maybe he was right, because as soon as Bourdain started in on his soup, he was pleasantly surprised. He actually enjoyed the taste, taking spoonful after spoonful and admitting, that's good. <laughs> I didn't like the soup. Soup's awesome. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain and the Golden Egg while normally Bourdain was checking out ethnic foods in casual cafes and local restaurants, he decided to treat himself with some fine dining when he went to Portugal. Treat yourself. He visited an upscale restaurant which produced modernized Portuguese fares with a twist. Although the food was high-end, Bourdain's order was a little bizarre. He started off with blood sausage, one of Bourdain's favorite dishes in the world. This was followed up by pig trotters, otherwise known as pig's feet. Try to think of something I, that I hate. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Historically eaten as a peasant's meal due to the cut of meat, this version of pig trotters was upgraded in a creamy kind of stew spread that Bourdain ate with bread. Bourdain loved this treat and called it the perfect blend of textures. But this was nothing compared to the main attraction. Bourdain finally got to engage in a little bit of luxury when he was served a golden egg. Unfortunately, the egg wasn't solid gold, but it was caked in actual gold foil that Bourdain could chomp down on. Now that's one meal that his viewers can probably get behind. Bourdain travels to the north. It's freaking freezing in here, Mr. Bigglesworth. Bourdain grabbed his parka and went up north for one episode of No Reservations, traveling to Quebec to learn about the culture and culinary traditions of Inuits. 
During his stay, Bourdain tagged along on a seal hunt, braving freezing conditions in order to secure supper for both himself and his hosts. Thanks was given for the lives of the seals, and then enough meat was gathered to last the families for many meals to come. Every part of the seal is used for specific dishes, and Bourdain was invited to sample all parts of the animal, from bits of liver. Oh, that is good. It's like, yeah. uh, it tastes like uh, sea urchin roll. To slivers of kidney. But the most extreme moment came when Bourdain was literally seen eye to eye with his meal. He was offered one of the seal's eyeballs to snack on. He later likened it to sucking out a grape and was thankful for the gift that his hosts had offered him. Anthony Bourdain Talk Show Tasting Although most of Bourdain's wild food tales came from his own television shows, reporters and news programs were also eager to see just how far Bourdain would go. On an installment of CNN, host Piers Morgan sat down with Bourdain and pushed him as far as he could, looking for any sign of Bourdain's legendary stomach cracking. He presented Bourdain with an entire spread of bizarre dishes, from turkey testicles to steamed pig's feet. Bourdain dominated the challenge, never backing down from any of the samples, and often complimenting them after he tasted them. In fact, he got so excited after being blindly fed goose intestines that he swore he'd order it at a restaurant if he had the chance, and labeled it good stuff. Well, that's good. What do you think it is? I don't care, I'll eat more of it. <laughs> One of the weirdest things that Bourdain was faced with, however, was balut, which is a bird embryo that is boiled and eaten straight out of its shell. Bourdain immediately recognized it from his travels and turned the tables on Morgan by grossing him out instead, describing the more disgusting balut dishes that he'd had before. Oh, this isn't a bad one. Usually it's like a little feathery baby oh! little. In fact, Bourdain called the balut that Morgan gave him not that bad. Eventually, Bourdain did admit that the taste wasn't one of his favorite things in the world, but that it was more of an issue with the food's texture. If Bourdain wasn't even a fan, balut probably won't be becoming a popular food anytime soon. Bourdain and the Mystery Meat Bourdain would eat pretty much anything when challenged, but he must have drawn the line somewhere, or would he? It's actually very tasty. <laughs> Every single thing you like here. During an episode of No Reservations, Bourdain explored the food of Namibia and received a dining experience that he would never forget. His hosts went hunting and caught a warthog, and then set about preparing it for Bourdain to taste. Of course, as a celebrity guest, Bourdain was given the most prized piece of the warthog, the anus. Bourdain politely described it as the type of amuse-bouche that you're not expecting. Watching as the warthog was prepared, Bourdain's stomach started to squirm and he admitted that he was doomed. He had low expectations for the dining experience and took a stab at fortune-telling by predicting worried phone calls, doctor's appointments, and needing heavy medication to bounce back from the warthog. Bourdain's translator stepped up and taste-tested the food before Bourdain, taking a bite and then giving it the lukewarm endorsement of it's all right. When Bourdain was handed his piece of the meat, he had no choice but to take a bite too. He didn't say much except for describing the food as chewy and okay. It's okay. Chewy. Mm. Not exactly what you want to hear from a famous chef. Before you fly off to try your exotic meals, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. And don't go anywhere. Check out some of our other videos.